So in turning to Judges chapter 14, you know what we just saw about Dan being symbolized as a lie in the last day. We see here that one of the most famous Danites in ancient times, Samson, is being depicted as killing a young lion, even though that they're symbolized as lions themselves. And that's what I told you, sons of God are all being symbolized as lions. So this little story here is a window in to this ancient war that these sons of God are having, and that these fallen sons of God are seeking to wipe out the remnant of these faithful sons of God upon our world. If you look here, you find out that Samson, the story about killing a lion, is really not unique to the Hebrew experience. We find out that it's a much older tale, and almost one of the most oldest literary tales on the face of the earth, called the Epic of Gilgamesh. And in there, we find the same hero king, mighty character, who is also famous for killing lions. So this is really just a, a symbolized story about this cyclic judgment that these Danites are supposed to impose upon the world. We find out that after he kills this lion, we see that we get this honey and these bees, a swarm of bees that comes out. Well, we know that the honey is code for this golden age. And of course, the bees is actually symbol for the Danites themselves to this day. So the Danites are ones that are actually supposed to bring about this golden age as they come upon this earth with this judgment. Well, as I told you, that they're supposed to arrive at the end of an age, which is the 13th Bakhtun, and we see Samson is depicted, in other words, the Danites as the 13th judge of Israel. Well, if we go here to verse 14, what we find out is, once again, another code for a cycle of time. This one just so happens to be the Ouroboros, which is really giving us the code for when these beings, you know, roundabouts are supposed to appear at the close of this age in which just so happens to be the timing for the ending of the Ouroboros also. Well, as you can see where all that connects up, I just wanted you to see that these sons of God are both depicted both unfallen and fallen as lions. And then I'm just going to show you something else. And to kind of get this understood here a little bit better, we're going to look here at 2 Samuel chapter 23. And I just want you to see here, this is going to be King David here. Famous warrior king, I guess I should say. Okay? Militant king for Israel. Well, we find out that he has these mighty men within his army also. Now, is that not consistent with what I'm saying, that David is supposed to be out there ordered to kill these other giants, and then now you see that he has mighty men on his side? Does that not substantiate what I'm saying, is that these mighty men are on both sides of the line, both the fallen and the unfallen? So, if you were to just read here for yourself, because I don't have the time to do it, in chapter 23, you'll see the descriptions of David's personal mighty men and the very mighty things that they're responsible for. You know, that just a few of them are killing, you know, many, many men. Just the same type of depiction that Samson was as he kills the Philistines. So we see the sons of God, these mighty men, are on both sides of the line, that they're actually warring against each other, and then these unfaithful sons are seeking to destroy all of the sons of God from off the face of the earth. And that's a lot of what this war is in the Old Testament between these giants that you yourself don't really fully realize what it's talking about. Now, just in closing, to give you one more last little tidbit of information here, I want to show you something. I want to read this to get you to think about something real quick. But the sons of Belial shall be all of them as thorns thrust away because they cannot be taken by hands. But the man that shall touch them must be fenced with iron and the staff of a spear, and they shall be utterly burned with fire in the same place. These men of Belial, it's describing in a sense that you can't touch them unless you yourself are fenced in iron. And even then, you can only touch them with the staff of a spear. 